racing dogs my whole life. This is what we grew up in, and it's, it is my passion. And I've been fortunate enough in the past few years to see real success in this. We won the Iditarod in 2012, became the youngest person ever to do so. At the time, I was 25 years old. At that point, the 20-year average for an Iditarod champion was 42 years old. In this unique sport, it's not necessarily about the most athletic or most physical dog driver. It's about being the best coach. The Iditarod is the longest sled dog race in the world. It travels over 1,000 miles across Alaska. The Iditarod was first run in 1973 in an effort to keep sled dogs alive in Alaska. My grandfather, along with about 30 other adventurous mushers, set off to cover the historic Iditarod Trail. My dad was 14 years old when that first Iditarod ran, and he got hooked. That's the environment that I grew up in. Once you leave the starting line, there's not another road for the rest of the 1,000 miles. The dog teams run day and night. Generally, we'll run for somewhere between six to eight hours, depending on trail conditions. Some of our longer runs might be 10 or 12 hours long. When we decide to stop and rest the team, it's honestly based more on putting calories into the dogs than it is about actually letting them sleep. The sled dogs are burning between 12 to 14,000 calories every single day on the Iditarod. I am the one person in the world that is their connection to health to food, to security, and everything else. And if I am not fully fulfilling that position, that leaves them with questions or doubts. Here's a perfect example of a dog team that does not trust their musher. We have a little trickle of water, and you see the dogs right behind the musher have their all four paws absolutely dug in. They're not going one more inch. And in this image, this is actually my dad, his lead dogs approach this water that's clearly a lot deeper, and he told them, let's go straight across and they believed him. When I was 16 years old, I ran my first pro race and I finished fourth by one minute. This was viewed as the perfect race, finishing with zero fuel left in the tank, knowing your team well enough to know exactly how much fuel and how hard you could push and still be able to reach the finish line. But there's some problems with that style. And when you race dogs in the style of racing the Iditarod, what ends up happening is the dogs take matters into their own hands and they're gonna decide that if we're gonna push this hard, I'm going to decide when I feel like pulling and when I don't feel like pulling because you're setting too high of a bar for a lot of these athletes. I wanted to become the youngest person ever to win the Iditarod. We gave us four Iditarods to accomplish that goal. So the dogs that I was able to procure for that 2009 Iditarod were later kindly referred to as the Scrubs. They were the biggest mixed match group of dogs you could possibly imagine. Every single dog on my team had failed in another kennel. So the first thing that I did is I went through the team and tried to figure out what has caused each of these dogs to fail in the past. The big hard pushes are the things that brought out the weaknesses in these dogs. We knocked it back to a sustainable pace. Rather than focusing on setting a very high level of operation where this is the standard, you either do it or get out. We set it up to say, this is the group we have to work with. How are we gonna set them up to succeed in this, in this environment? And we ended up finishing the Iditarod in sixth place, which was phenomenal, honestly. What we realized was once we got on the Iditarod and raced at a sustainable pace the entire way, because I was more concerned about finishing the race than trying to be competitive, the dog team continued to build and excel. My realization was you could build a team over the course of the race. And we started working on this kind of theory of building a positive spiral. In 2012, we set off on our final chance to become the youngest person ever to win the Iditarod. And the most important trait to me, it was mental. I can work with a dog that's willing to work. We started out the Iditarod in 2012, continuing this theory and developing the dogs on the race. The best chance you have of winning the race is getting to the finish line as quickly as possible. But it's amazing how many people miss that point. Because in a race, what do we start doing? We start racing our competition. You have to look at your team, because your team is the only team that you have control over on the Iditarod. It was pretty easy to do that for the first 700 miles. The only problem came along about 300 miles into the Iditarod when our style was working so well that I was actually in the lead of the race at 300 miles to go rather than being in position to catch up with 300 miles to go. That had been our plan. And all of a sudden, things started looking different because now we were actually in the lead. And there's a lot of media attention. For the first time, people were looking at us and saying, what is Dallas going to do? It just kind of occurred to me, why would I change the one thing that's been working so well the entire way, only because that's how everybody before us had ever done it? So that was actually our decision at that point, is I'm going to build this team. And the result was, 
is we ended up playing a cat and mouse game with my other top competitor at that point, which was a, a lady named Ali Zirkel, one of the best dog drivers we've seen in many, many years. I would outrun her team by 40 or 50 minutes on a 40 to 50 mile run. And then we'd get to the checkpoint and I would give that time, instead of taking that time and trying to get another 40 or 50 minutes ahead of her on the next run, I stayed right with her. I stayed there as long as I could and gave my dogs as much rest as I could. And then on the next run, we'd outrun her by five minutes more and then 10 minutes more. And we kept reinvesting that energy and that effort the dogs gave me into rest. And sure enough, it became the more simple way for me. As a leader on these teams, I wanted to take responsibility for absolutely everything. Because as soon as we gave something up, let it out of our control, we become less of a leader because we don't have the ability to affect the outcome. We finally crossed the finish line, became victorious, and accomplished our goal of becoming the youngest person to ever win the Iditarod. But what I felt was the bigger accomplishment in that was the learning, I guess the learning curve of sorts that we went through and the realizations, actually having the opportunity to race in the front of this race and realizing that our opponents were still just humans and canines, and they had to play by the same rules we did.